Sapphire, the company that we look at with every new AMD Radeon generation with brands like the Nitro Plus, the Pulse, and occasionally the Pure, has a new Nitro Plus product, and it's not a Radeon. It's a motherboard. Now, motherboards are actually nothing new for Sapphire. Here I have search results from before 2024, and they actually made Intel boards, like this X79 offering. In the AM5 era, they've offered a B650 board. They also have an A620 offering. But what we're talking about today is their all-new Nitro Plus B850A Wi-Fi 7 motherboard. There are two Nitro Plus boards with the B850 chipset from AMD. Both this B850A, which is the ATX variant, and a B850M, a micro ATX variant, which does not have Wi-Fi 7. So if you want the latest in wireless connectivity, you will need to go with the ATX board. Otherwise, the two have nearly identical specifications, as you will see here on the screen. And feel free to pause for a closer look at these specs. Obviously, these are B850 motherboards. And we will take a look here at AMD's chart for their AM5 platform chipsets. Now, B850 sits below the X870. The primary difference is going to be PCIe lanes. You can absolutely build a cutting edge system on B850, but you'll be limited to one Gen 5 by 16 PCIe slot and one Gen 5 by 4 NVMe slot. Far fewer overall lanes, the remainder of which will be Gen 4. From the reviewer's guide, we have this breakdown of exactly how the lanes and sharing work for this motherboard. So looking at the press release here from Sapphire Nation, this is obviously targeting DIY enthusiasts who want to get into the AM5 platform. 12 plus 2 plus 1 phase power, 55 amps per phase. Now there are motherboards out there with higher numbers here, but the maximum power draw from the ever popular X3D processors would not require anywhere near this many phases. DDR5 support up to 8,000 mega transfers per second. And this board runs on the all new Sapphire Core BIOS, which is great. And I'll show it to you in a little bit. I have some screen capture from the initial setup with this board. Switching to some B-roll here, I recorded the unboxing process and took a first look at the board, which feels quite good. And I was impressed by the fact that all three of the PCIe slots have the metal armor on them, even though the bottom two just don't have the PCIe lanes. But it is nice to have those other PCIe slots on this full-size board internal capture cards. Some people still use an internal sound card, Josh. And if you want to pause your screen here, this is from the reviewer's guide. It will tell you exactly what components were used for the power phases. If you care about such details, what I can tell you from my experience building with this board, it was as painless as I expect any modern AM5 build to go. I used a Ryzen 7 7800X3D and paired it with an RTX 4090. So I have, in effect, created the fastest gaming PC of mid-2023. But I don't necessarily think that anybody's putting a 4090 on a B850 board. Who knows? Pricing on this board, by the way, is 189 US dollars. I imagine a lot of builds will end up incorporating a Ryzen 5 with this, but the Ryzen 7 X3D processors, they are the darlings of the DIY space, and I just couldn't resist putting one in. Plus, I've never actually used a 7800X3D before, so we somehow missed that generation. I have a few observations to make about the completed configured build with this Nitro Plus B858 Wi-Fi 7 motherboard. Number one, and the thing that impresses me every time I go to use this, because this is currently in our living room and we use this as our primary gaming PC out there, it is rock solid. I have never had a system lockup or any stability issues whatsoever with this build. And that's all I really ask for from a motherboard these days. Though I will say one of the downsides of the B850 chipset is that you just don't have the fastest connectivity from USB, for example. There is no USB 4 on this board and the USB-C port is limited to 10 gigabit per second. You are not going to get the full bandwidth from a lot of portable storage devices these days. Networking performance was great. I don't have a Wi-Fi 7 router. I tested it with a Wi-Fi 6 router. I tried the uh, Ethernet, but I'm limited to one gigabit there as well. So the networking tests are just there as a reference. Yes, it will essentially saturate previous generation standards there. I would have to get some new equipment to test out Wi-Fi 7 with this, which is, of course, one of the main selling points of this board. Storage performance was excellent. I used a Gen 5 drive. I was getting very high transfer speeds as expected. I did put a 5090 in here long enough to verify that, yes, indeed, 
Gen 5 is active on the primary PCIe along with the Gen 5 M.2 SSD. Running benchmarks with the 4090 produced results that were either as expected or slightly better than expected. So now obviously without testing this against a bunch of other motherboards, those results are just there for your reference. But these are the exact numbers I expect with the 4090, if not slightly better. But again, I have not tested a 7800X3D, so my 4090 experiences back in the day were on a different platform. All in all, I am very pleased with this motherboard. I will now talk about some possible drawbacks, and one in particular. I did mention the fact that there is not fast USB connectivity with this. There is no USB Gen 2x2, there is no USB 4, so you will need to look elsewhere if you need the latest in USB connectivity. My primary concern is actually with the BIOS, and not Sapphire's core BIOS, because the user experience there is outstanding. I mean with BIOS support. If we look at the downloads section, and I'm recording this on the 22nd of October, we are still on the initial version of the BIOS, released on September 1st. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing. While I have seen BIOS updates since September 1st from other vendors, and we have news of a GISA 1.2.7.0 bringing support for future Ryzen CPUs, I expect Sapphire to have future BIOS versions ready when they have been tested and internally validated. I would not want to trade the stability that I've had with this board for a faster AGISA update cadence. So if we only see a BIOS update every two or three months and it's rock solid like this one has been, I would be perfectly happy. But it is something to keep in mind since this is not one of the mainline motherboard vendors. This Nitro Plus B850A Wi-Fi 7 motherboard has been an outstanding experience from the very beginning. It's a very basic package. You don't really get anything other than the motherboard, a Wi-Fi antenna, and a SATA cable. But there are elements of the design that feel more premium than the price point would suggest. $189 does not typically get you three armored PCIe slots in this market. Now, one aspect of this that does kind of point to that budget price point is the slightly older Realtek audio codec, ALC897. I have no problem with that codec, and it has the analog audio outputs that you just don't see on a lot of modern motherboards. So it's a trade-off I am willing to make. So in closing, Sapphire's Nitro Plus B850A Wi-Fi 7 motherboard offers a great user experience, especially from that core BIOS. The user experience there is as good as any BIOS out there right now. CMOS battery placement is excellent, by the way. You can get to it for any needed BIOS resets. I think it looks good. That's a subjective opinion. And overall, I am still enjoying my experience with this board. I have not had to return it, and it's in the living room, and we use it almost every day. So for its overall reliability and the fact that we're having a great experience gaming on this in real life, I would highly recommend this. If you're looking to move up to an AM5 board for less than $200, this will be hard to beat. If you can live without the fastest USB connectivity, this does of course have that fast wireless support. So it is an interesting trade-off, but overall I highly recommend this board and no, this was not a sponsored review. Sapphire has not seen this until you see it. And I took my sweet time making this. I've had the board for well over a month, possibly two, but that allowed me to do the sort of organic long-term testing that has shown me just how reliable it is. So I, they can't be mad at me for taking so long. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing to PC Perspective here on YouTube, and we will see you in the next one.